PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 22, Part 7. The last lecture for this lesson is going to cover doing an assembly drawing. And in the PDF, a variety of views are given for the first page, and they also show an exploded view for the second page of the drawing. You want to follow this pretty closely. There are a few things <clears throat> I might suggest adding or changing. I brought up the drawing here. You see it's fairly decent. One thing I noticed is that there's really no view showing an end of the object. So the end view, the round view, is not displayed anywhere, which is kind of uncommon in a way. This is on an e size sheet, so it's fairly big. Maybe if we change it to uh, 0.75, we'll have a little bit more room. And I'll click on the front down here. which one is the primary view. The reason, what happened just then is that this is the first view that was put in up here. And the other views wouldn't move because they are children. So I had to search for the one that was the parent view. <clears throat> so let's off of, let's say, it um, doesn't really make any difference, but let's do a projection view from here. And we're going to put it on the left-hand side like so. And view display, we want it to be no hidden. And probably uh, no display of the tangencies. No, maybe dimmed. Let's try dimmed. So that's one view that was missing in there. <clears throat> Sometimes people have a difficult time figuring out how to display these views, how to get them to look like this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a view up on the top off of here, project it off like so. And again, I should have, it's following the environment, but I should have uh, changed that to no hidden. And I wouldn't have to do this every time. So there's my view. And I'm going to double click on it and let's turn it into a section. See, the B section is the appropriate one for it. And let's leave it like it is. So cancel. And let's zoom in on it. And let's double click on the sectioning. And <clears throat> let's go through this. So this is a key. Um, if we hatch it, maybe we need a little bit uh, more hatching in there. It could be a solid one also. Go to next. <clears throat> We've got the cotter pin that's cut, and it's a standard part, so that is supposed to be filled. We've got the uh, nut over here, and I'm going to exclude that, which is normal for a standard view, I mean for a standard part. Next, same way here, I'm going to exclude that. And next, uh, this one here, let's change our angle and change our spacing, like so. Next, um, this one here, I think we have to change our spacing, like so. Next, let's use fill for that washer. What else do we have? Let's change the spacing on the taper coupling. And I might want to change the angle a little bit. And next, let's exclude round part, the shaft. Not uncommon to do that. Done. And you have now standard parts excluded from it. You can see no section. The fills are for the small standard part um, that are cut at a cross section of 90 degrees to a round feature. That's common to do that. And when you have a very small 
item like the cross section on a washer, that's another place we can change it. So that's how we get that particular view. That's what I wanted to show you. Looks like we did it a little bit different on this one, but that's okay. Now, one on the bottom here. Let's undo that one. Yeah, undo enough, I guess. And I'll just delete that view. Now, let's uh, let's project another view, and this one off that middle view here. But let's go down here. So this is going to basically be the same as this section one right here. And let's double click on it. Go to sections, 2D section plus. And we have section A going through here. Apply. So you can see we still have to go in here and change the display style, but it won't show a, a colored section anyway. So let's go to dimmed, apply, or let's go to none and apply. And click on sections. And in this case here, let's go and let's change this to a local section and a reference point. So basically, I'm just going to pick somewhere. For instance, right here. And now I'm going to, uh, oh, I went the wrong way, sorry. Let's see the reference point. OK, here's the boundary. So let me go around here like so. Mouse button to finish it. I won't use an arrow display on it. Apply. And here we have our view. That's how we got that view. And again, just like before, if you wanted to change the section in any way, you just go ahead and do that individually. angle here and next let's exclude that done and we can have something a little bit different than even there so just a portion of this is being sectioned now the other thing here we did put in a second sheet and that one has the exploded view so you want to do your exploded view in the assembly obviously and then you're going to display it here. And we created exploded view when we were doing the, uh, the assembly itself. So again, there's a variety of choices you've got. You can uh, put in some uh, detail views, uh, something to show this internal portion a little bit better. Detail view, pick, let's say, here. And let's say this is the only portion that you wanted to show. So you can see the internal portion a little bit better by having it scaled up. And even in here, you can go in and you can actually change the section. Even you can detail it independently. And this one is for this cut uh, for the key seat. Um, let's go to the next one. Okay, that's over in here. That's the standard part. That's excluded. We could fill this one right here. Let's see if it does it. No, it won't allow me to. Sometimes you're going to be surprised, but it won't allow you to do certain things. There's ways to get around it sometimes, but uh, in this particular case, I'll go back, filter back over to that one. Here's the nut. Next. And let's see. It won't let me fill it. So let's try this. This is kind of cheating, but it's OK to do. So again, add the ones that you need. Make sure you're using your assembly format that you created in lesson, uh, lesson 12 of the book. It's very important. So. Let's go into our 3.0 here, 
and here and here. So this is the format that we created previously and you want to make sure you can use the same one. You're going to have to put the parameters on every part in the same way as you did before. So every one of these components in order to show up in the bill of material going to have, have to have the appropriate items in here. So let's just open up one of them and then go into our tools tab tools tab and parameters now this is interesting there it is it takes a little while and you can see this information has been input in there the parameters and we actually used a PRTMO this we actually used MAT in this one you're going to have your material for each part and so you're going to use your methodology that we use to create um, the assembly format in lesson 12. So this is the old style. We didn't have an automated material readout then. We actually had to put the um, material in as a parameter so it wouldn't automatically read it. Again, this is an old legacy part. Yours is not going to have to do that. You're going to put your, you're going to use the same, th you're going to do it the same way as you did when you did all the parts for the swing clamp and you're going to have parameters in there you're going to have uh, that you should actually do your data A, B, and C you should have spe specific colors for each one of your components you should have the material specification make sure your um, your uh, units are selected correctly make sure everything's done right um, and then it will propagate into your bill of materials once you bring that format in that you've already saved this completes lesson 22 lectures.